You're listening to The Cash Podcast, creating affluence, success, and happiness with your financial surgeon, Adam Coach, president and portfolio manager at Libertas Wealth Management Group at LibertasWealth.com. Happy Friday, everyone. It's now been over a year since the initial COVID lockdowns, and as we fast forward into 2021, the new year has brought us new and different things to worry about. But I want to spend today sifting through all the noise, providing you some unbiased information about this second year of a potential and, and really a hopeful recovery. But first, as always, a few housekeeping items. If this is your first time listening or watching, then thank you so much for joining us. The Cash Podcast is produced weekly, and as stated in the introduction, Cash stands for Creating Affluence, Success, and Happiness, and that's my mission. My hope is for you to learn a little bit more on each and every episode so that you become more successful, wealthier, happier, and more educated than you were before you started listening today. So please come back often. Feel free to subscribe because we're both on iTunes and YouTube. In addition, you can also follow me on Twitter at Adam Koch and on Instagram at Financial Surgeon. Last but not least, all links, visuals, charts, and other educational resources are always available on our website, and I am going to be posting some screenshots of some of the things I'm gonna be showing you today if you're watching on YouTube for those of you who are listening on iTunes, but I promise, as always, to make sure that I talk you through um, a lot of these things and do my best uh, given the fact that you don't have visual aids when you're listening in the car or on the treadmill or on your walk or wherever it is you listen. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, A quote, as always, I always like to start with a quote. In fact, I almost decided to skip it today because I was in a hurry. But um, the quote goes like this. As, as we think about COVID, and that's not the quote, by the way. As we think about COVID, as we think about the lockdowns this past year and how everyone has had their own struggles and how um, I think, I, well, I know some people didn't make it through. There's several, I think, who've probably still struggling today. Uh, I thought this quote was pretty applicable, and it's by Ron Rash, an author, He said, I've come to understand that the world will have its way with us despite what we might wish or once believed. So I don't like to think of that as a negative quote because I'm typically a cup half full optimistic person, but um, I I tend to think that it's just, it's reality. It is what it is. And I think that we need to uh, come to expect that sometimes things are just going to hit us in the face. It's like the old Mike Tyson quote that everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. And I think that that's what the world does to us sometimes. And it's not just the world. I think it's each of our individual lives. I think that, you know, unexpected things, uh, they happen. uh, And we just need to uh, learn to deal with them and not have too much of an emotional response to them. And uh, just just do our best to deal with them. It's kind of like... I don't know. It's like uh, when when you have a death in the family, you know, you're not you're not gonna get over it, but you're gonna get through it. And I think that's kind of what what this is like this past year, and then I'm sure what what the next year is probably gonna look a lot like. Except a, I would assume, and I hope certainly a whole lot better. So um, I've got a bunch of stuff that I want to show you and tell you today. So I'm going to jump right into it here. Um, I've got a couple closing uh, remarks or cl- closing, very, very optimistic, I should say, closing pictures that I got from um, um, a friend of mine in, in the business. But but let's look at some uh, reality here. Uh, the NASDAQ, um, this is what you're looking at on the screen right here for those of you listening on iTunes. The NASDAQ composite, which is you know a, a lot of the technology stocks, uh, this is the NASDAQ 100, the Qs. Uh, or in other words, the QQQ. You might have seen some commercials during March Madness about investing with this, so or in this, I should say. I mean, it, if you look at just since this uh, this past February twelfth, um, it's it's down right around seven and a half percent. And uh, right now we're underwater, as I like to call it. In other words, we're under the 50-day moving average or 50-day trend line. And at one point it was down about 10, almost 11 percent um, at the low, which occurred back on March 8th. Um, so right now the market's looking a little iffy, um, but when I say that, I, I want to be really super crystal clear here and that I don't think we're going to have a bad year for the market. I think that there's a lot of positive things going on under the surface. Um, I've said before that I believe that um, with the Fed being behind us for the most part, with um, stimulus programs being in play, uh, with zero interest rate policies, you can have your opinions about those things, and I have my own opinions about those things and whether they're good or bad in the long term. Um, but but the bottom line is as long as we have a lot of this economic support under our feet, 
and a lot of these things supporting us from the standpoint of of the Fed, then I think that uh, we we should expect that things are going to be okay in the longer or call it intermediate term to longer term. Uh, but I think that in the short term, we're always going to have your intermediary call it pullbacks in the market. You know, pullbacks are you know three, five, six percent drops, um, short term drops. You're going to have your corrections. You know, market corrections. Um, you know, I hate the, I hate using defined numbers, but say drops of 10%. I just showed you the Nasdaq was down as much as 11 so far, um, and it could do, it could go down more. Uh, we could see more um, struggling in the short term. And in fact, I I wouldn't ex well I wouldn't be surprised to see a a short term struggle, but that's just going to set things up for another run. I I believe. Um, you know, I guess I said earlier I didn't want to be biased here, but but I do have a, a bias, and I, I believe the market has an upward bias as well. So um, I don't think that any weakness over the course of the next days or even weeks is going to be met with some new market crash. Do I think that? Do I think that the the amount of debt that's being created? Um, you know, we're up to I think over uh, thirty trillion at this point. I don't know if that's happened yet. Hold on, I'm gonna pull it up here and then bring it over to the screen. I'll just tell those of you who, it looks like it hasn't registered yet, all the new stimulus, but um, when we look at the national debt right now, we're sitting at over 28 trillion, which is roughly 130% of GDP, and that's not sustainable. I mean, that's my opinion, but do I think that um, that this debt is going to create a market crash that's gonna start next week? No, I don't. Do I think that when, uh, do I think that this could create a problem in the market at some point in the future, a market crash? Yeah, I do. Um, do I think that when it happens that we'll go home from work or we'll go to bed on Friday night and on Monday morning when the market opens it'll be down 50%? No, I don't. I don't think that either. So I think that um, I think that there's definitely concerns long term with some of the things that are going on right now, kicking the can down the road, um, a lot of the money printing. But in the short term, um, I'm not too concerned. Um, about these pullbacks and drops in the market because I think that the short, the long term or intermediate term still looks relatively rosy. So let's look at um, bonds. I'm gonna look at TLT here. Um, here's the bond picture, which looks really, really ugly. So for those of you who are listening, I'm gonna go back to, looks like I'll just use August. Um, I was talking to a couple clients about this um, earlier this week. Oops, that didn't work. Let's try that again. So if we if we look at the current performance of 20-year treasuries going back to uh, August, it's down. The U.S. Treasury bonds, 20-year treasuries, are down 20% um, in a very pretty short period of time. Um, and mo and a lot of that has to do with the with the fact that uh, yields have been going up. So um, so if we look at 10-year uh, yields, this is the 10-year Treasury yield, or in other words, the note, not the bond, but the interest rate. And when interest rates go up, bond values go down. So as we started to see toward the end of last year, this change in trend in the 10-year note, as well as the 20-year note and so on, um, I'm not gonna go through everything, as rates have gone up, bonds have gone down in value. So if you look at more uh, longer term uh, bonds, this is the, uh, I'm looking now at the, the PIMCO 25-year zero coupon US Treasury index, and uh, it looks worse. So, you know, you can take the top going back to, we'll say April of last year. And as of right now, it looks like we're down, when I say we, we don't own this obviously, but um, treasury bonds, I'm sorry, zero coupon bonds, 25 year zeros are down about 28% since the high. Um, and I, I was talking to somebody about this just the other day and their reaction was exactly what I would, would expect their reaction to be, which was, wait a minute, I thought, I thought bonds were safe. And that's where we have to be really, really careful what we're owning in our in our bond portfolios. So, you know, when we look at things like I'm going to pull up another ETF here. It's like seven to ten year Treasuries. Um, this is shorter term Treasury bonds. Um, you, you, there's a there, it peaks back in say April on the 21st again in August 4th, and then it's kind of been down since then. But if we scan back in time, you can see, or if you're watching on YouTube here, that there's this kind of line in the sand that goes back to uh, August 30th of 2019, as well as a break a breakout here in February of 2020, um, right before COVID hit. And then ever since then, it was kind of a sideways chop. 
And then we've just seen bonds going down pretty much since last summer. Um, if you even want to call the peak summer, you could call it summer, you could call it April. Um, I don't think there needs to be a debate about that. But um, the, that's the bad news when it comes to bonds. The good news when it comes to bonds is that I'm starting to see some positive momentum divergences. So if I turn off my crosshairs here, and I'll just do, a, I'll just point a little trend line here. With, here here's a positive uh, higher low in momentum, even though it's still below seven, I'm sorry, still below 30 on RSI. I like to see a the next higher low would be nice to see it bottom above 30. That would be more positive evidence, um, a little bit more valid from the standpoint of a positive divergence, all while uh, prices have been going down. So here's lower lower lows in prices um, while we have higher lows in momentum. So I'll just draw this on the chart here for those of you who are, who are watching. So again, lower lows in price, higher lows in momentum. That's called a positive momentum divergence. And that just gives us a hint that it's quite possible that we might see some positive movement out of bonds in the near term. But right now, things are a little pretty risky. You'd be catching a falling knife right now. Um, and when I say catching a falling knife, you know, we want to wait ideally in my, in my, the way I manage portfolios, we want to wait for the knife to hit the ground first and to settle before we go grabbing for that knife. Changing gears, this is the short term and this is what I call my, my pre-flight checklist. Um, I look at this pretty much every day, every every morning when I wake up or at night before I leave the office, and I just it, what it gives me it gives me a really good idea of whether and whether or not the market's healthy or not, if it's healthy over what time frame, and what I mean by that is short, intermediate, or long term, or or all of the the above or none of the above, and then whether or not it's safe to be adding new investments or buying new investments uh, in the stock market specifically. Um, and I'm colorblind, so I have all of this coded specifically blue and red as opposed to blue and green. So blue is good, red's bad, <laughs> obviously. So um, when you look at these these squares here, well, what we're what we're focusing on is whether or not we see more blue than red. And if it's kind of a mixed bag, which is what you're seeing from a, a market climate standpoint, then that's what we have is a mixed bag. It's kind of choppy. Um, the current market outlook's probably, you know, seeing a little bit of distribution uh, in the market, which means that, you know, you're seeing a little bit more selling than buying, especially out of the institutions, the smart money. And right now, it just isn't all that safe to be adding new investments to the market if there's if there's cash sitting around right now. So right now, I'm kind of sitting tight uh, for the next, call it days, and we'll see how the next few days and weeks go before I start adding new money to our portfolios but but uh but this is not i guess i, I want to reiterate again this is not an indication that that i think the market's going to crash this is just short term we're just you know saying are, are we are is it safe for new entries right now uh and at least for me the answer is no right now if i change gears here and go more long term um the long term picture looks really good um right now small caps are the leaders from a long term standpoint with large caps being number two, international number three, commodities are number four. So um, from the standpoint of uh, what investments have been exhibiting the highest relative strength, um, small caps look great. Yeah, did they have a recent pullback? Did they, did they look a little rough you know, over the last few weeks? Yes, absolutely. But you know, things can't go up constantly uh, in a straight line forever. So those things, they do need, do need to pull back and they do need to correct and they do need to breathe and exhale and take breaks. They can't just sprint uh, forever, obviously. And I mean, it, it's always interesting to me when you know the market does have some good periods of time, whether that be weeks, months, or, or even a year, that uh, it's easy to get used to that and, and forget about that volatility that can come and bite us from time to time. So that's the longer term picture. And then, um, and then from a sector rotation standpoint, I'd say that's probably another big theme that's been going on. Um, you can see this is a relative rotation graph. Uh, for those of you that are listening, what, what you're looking, what people are looking at right now, and I'll post this online as well. Um, you can also watch it in the video. Is uh, upper left quadrant is improving versus the market. Upper right is leading or beating the market. Lower right is weakening. Lower left is lagging versus the market. And then the zero point right here in the middle is the S&P 500. And what we're seeing right now is the energy has been outperforming, um, but just recently we've, we're seeing this arrow kind of point down and what that indicates is that energy is starting to weaken or at least it's it's pulling back uh, on a long-term basis still looks good um, but at least for now financials are also kind of uh, heading south a little bit here but not not so much that there's anything to be worried about 
but we're also starting to see real estate and communications, uh, the communications sector start to do well with discretionaries and uh, utilities sitting in the basement but trying to find their way into some strength. So, um, so that's one thing that we can look at and say, well, energy still looks really good, but it's taking a pause uh, while we're starting to see some improvement out of the communications sector and then real estate sector as well. Um, when we look at U.S. stocks, uh, same thing, relative rotation graph here. Bottom left, this is gold miners and junior gold miners. I find it really interesting that they're sitting over here <laughs> all by themselves in the uh, in the lagging and almost in the improving quadrant for uh, for larger uh, gold mining stocks, <laughs> while everything else just kind of sits over here on the right side of the uh, relative rotation graph. So so what I'm seeing here is uh, again you know we're oil and gas exploration, uh, small cap energy is looking still to be in the leading quadrant, but starting to pull back a little bit here. Energy same story. Um, and then some of the things that were doing really, really well this past, call it six months, or in call it toward the end of the year, 2020, uh, into the new year, are really starting to, to weaken versus the market. And that would be things like solar stocks and lithium battery stocks and IPOs and biotech, automotive stocks and things of that nature. So a lot of those things are starting to exhibit weakness. Um, and it's going to be interesting to find out whether or not that rotation continues. And we see it, uh, see all these, call it, uh, stay at home, you know, technology names, biotech names. Um, if we continue to see those rotate into this lagging quadrant uh, and start continuing to weaken versus the market, or if we see them jackknife and head back north again, which would be very bullish uh, and very positive for those sectors. Um, so I'm going to close this workbook out as well here. And then I want to show you a couple more things today. And this is the last two things I want to show you. And again, like I said, I promised I wanted to sh end with some cup half full, really positive stuff. So Ryan Dietrich, uh, head of technical analysis at uh, LPL Financial, posted this on Twitter and I snagged it. Um, and this, what we're looking at here is this is the seventh bull market that has taken place uh, since World War II. And what I want you to pay attention to here is as we're sitting right here uh, at the end of year one and kind of moving into year two is while a lot of people are worried about government debt, about the politics, about the presidency, about the Senate and all these other things is if we just focus on the numbers and there's been plenty, by the way, plenty of political turmoil that has occurred in prior bull markets and prior uh, after prior market bottoms and prior economic recessions. So there's it's not like this is different this time. Is it a, is it exactly the same? No, of course it's not. But there, there's always kind of like I started with that quote, there's always something that's going to smack us in the face. But as you can see here, uh, the, or if you're listening on iTunes, there is not a single bull market that has occurred since World War II that didn't go up. In other words, if this market ends up being down in 2021, and it could, it's entirely possible that it could, then it would be the first time that we've seen a bull market uh, with a, a, a down year in, their second, in its second year since World War II. So I think that's pretty positive. And a similar statistic here is that you know when we go back and we say uh, what, when we look at the S and P 500's performance after a 30% or more bear market bottom, so when the market's gone down 30% or more, and then you look at the following year, the average performance of the following year and the second year, what we can see here is that, uh, and for those of you listening on iTunes is that we, again, there is no negative year. We've got a 10% year, 21% back in 1974. In 1987, the second year was up 29% on the S&P, 8.2% in October, uh, after October of 2002, 15.9% uh, uh, in 09, and then 16.9% is the average second year performance. And we don't know what's gonna happen this year, of course. We don't know what it'll look like. I wouldn't say that there's any direct correlation between between any of these, I, and and of course it's a, it's a new year, and the market's moving differently now than it ever has before. There's more retail money in the market than there ever has been before. Uh, there's more volume than we've seen uh, in in well, <laughs> we, there's more volume in the market than we've ever seen in many cases. So uh, anything can happen, of course. I don't want to I don't want to throw any guarantees out there, and that's not what I'm trying to say. Is that I'm guaranteeing that we'll see a positive year, but I think that the evidence suggests um, that maybe we shouldn't be so pessimistic. 
So um, with that all being said, I think I'll go ahead and end for the day. Um, so you know, feel free to share this episode as always with your friends, your family. If you'd like to discuss your personal situation further, if, uh, if you, remember you never have to be a client to ask a question if you are listening to this and you're not a client or if you're watching this and you're not a client. You know, if you'd like to set up an introduction call or Zoom meeting with myself, uh, just head over to our website, to our contact page, and you can schedule something on our calendar. Um, and as I always say, there's thousands of podcasts out there and you chose to give hours a listen today. So thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and YouTube. And remember, you can sign up at LibertasWealth.com to get not only these updates, but also our other screencasts, videos, and articles that, uh, that I write directly delivered to your inbox. Feel free to follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash LibertasWealth. And again, I'm also on Twitter, Adam Koch, as well as Instagram at Financial Surgeon. So thank you so much once again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to The Cash Podcast with your financial surgeon, Adam Posh. To see any charts or images that were mentioned in this show or to check out additional articles, videos, and other educational resources, head over to LibertasWealth.com.